another edition of Wow Wednesday with Madison 4-H and me, Miss Beth. It's good to see everybody this morning. Today, <clears throat> we are going to talk about something that's big. Did you know that 80% of all the world's animals are insects? Yes, insects. And we're going to learn about insects today. I'm going to show you how you can start your own insect collection. First of all, what's an insect? Well, insects, all insects have at least three body parts. Three, count them, one, two, three. The first body part is their head. Yes, they have a head. That's where their brain is. Yep, insects have brains. And on that head, they also have the antenna. Antenna are used for communication. Hello, hello out there, hello, hello. Communication, antenna. The next body part is the thorax. The thorax provides the place where the wings and the legs are attached, okay? The thorax's job is for help for movement. Any insect that you see, you're gonna see, you're gonna find that their wings, if they have wings, and their legs are attached to their, the middle part, the thorax. Wings, all insects have six legs. Those are legs, those are wings. But they have six legs. If it has eight legs, it's not an insect. If it has two legs, it's not an insect. If it has four legs, not an insect. Insects have six legs. Sometimes insects can have wings, okay? They can have two pair of wings, one, two, or they can have one pair of wings. This little wasp has two pair. And then the last part, body part that they have is their abdomen, okay? That's a funny word, abdomen. That's where all of their uh, digestion, respiration, all of that takes place there in their thorax, okay? So that is, those are the body parts of the insect. Now, there's two ways that insects grow, okay? They all, the first one is called metamorphosis. I know you've heard that word before, metamorphosis. It means a change. And the first one is called a gradual metamorphosis. Gradual means over time. It's kind of like gradual metamorphosis. I could say that it's kind of like a kid growing up. You start out as a little baby. Well, insects start out as eggs. And those eggs hatch. And they hatch out into a little baby. They call that a nymph. So if you're a little kid right now, you're a nymph. And then it grows a little bit bigger until it come, becomes an adult of full size. See, it's gradual. It grows like you, gradual metamorphosis. Now, the other kind of metamorphosis is what we think about when we think about butterflies, okay? But that's also a beetle too. It starts out as an egg right here. And that egg then turns into a larva. That's the worm or the caterpillar part. Then it turns into a pupa. And from that pupa, it turns into the adult beetle. The beetle lays the eggs again, and the whole process starts all over. It's called complete metamorphosis. That's what happens with a butterfly, okay? Because butterflies are insects too. Now, some of the things that I'm gonna show you today is Pretty cool. Um, you wanna start your own bug collection? Well, first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need some way to catch that insect, okay? And you wanna use maybe a net. This one is a really good one. It has an extendable handle. This is fancy. But when you catch it, then you can hold it here and you can look down here at it, okay? So a net, that's good. Another way that I have found to catch the insects is especially now that it's summertime, you leave the outside light on, ooh, you can collect some insects there on your porch that night around that, around that uh, lane or that, that bulb. So 
So we catch our insect. Just so happens, I caught this really cool, I had to find out what it was. I thought I knew what it was, but I looked it up, I found out what it was, and it's called a katydid, okay? A katydid, that's a funny name. But it gets its name from the sound that it makes. Katie did. So at night, in the summers, you can hear them. Now, I want to save this insect because I want to study it. Okay, I want to look at it. This little uh, jar that I have has like a little magnifying glass on top of it. So I can look down and I can really see it. I can't see anything without my glasses. So let's put my glasses on. So I can actually see. I also have a really good magnifying glass that, that you can look through and you can see it makes everything so much bigger. So I could actually look at it and I could see it up even closer. I can see its little, little hooks on its legs. I can see its mouth, its antenna and its eyes. It's really awesome. So having a good magnifying glass is a great thing, okay? Now, if I want to um, preserve this Katie did. Let me show you how to make a kill jar. First of all, you need some kind of air tight container. I have this little jar from um, something we ate at the house and I cleaned it out, I washed it out. Now, you take 100% acetone, which is nail polish remover. This is some strong stuff. It's potent, it's very strong. It gets that fingernail polish remover off, or fingernail polish off it's a remover then you take a piece of cotton okay this is just a uh, you can use a cotton ball this is just a piece of flat cotton and I want to put a little bit of nail polish remover on it okay then I'm gonna squeeze out I'm just gonna squeeze it on one of these other ones because I don't have any paper towels with me right now I'll squeeze out any extra okay no extra there Okay, put the lid back on tight. And then I'm gonna drop this piece of cotton right in there. Close it up tight, okay? I have now made a kill jar, all right? What this does, this acetone takes all of the oxygen out of this jar, all right? So that's why you wanna leave the lid on. And so what I will do <clears throat> is when I get ready, to um, get this little critter on my board, I will put him in here. But before that, let's take a closer look at him. Here he is up close. This is a Katie did. I look through. There you go. Got his three body parts. You really can't tell from here, but he does. He had his head, his thorax, and his abdomen. Okay. Okay, so now that we have our kill jar all ready, we're going to take our insect with the three body parts and six legs and his long antenna. We'll open it up. My nose is itching. We'll open this little jar up. Oh, let's see if we can't get him to go in there. There he is. Okay. And we will close the lid tight. Now, it he won't lose oxygen immediately. It'll take a little while. So um, we will just, probably a few hours, so we will just put him right over here. Okay, now once um, he is dead, we will then take our insect display box. I actually made this display box out of some old um, one by fours that I had laying around the house and a piece of plywood right here. And I took a piece of um, styrofoam that I had laying around and inserted it into the center. This really makes a really good uh, it's like a pin cushion almost, but um, what I did was, as I collect my insects, 
I label them, okay? I don't leave them in the jar for a long, long time because once they die, you immediately put them on your, um, your pin cushion, I guess you'd say, your display board, and because they, they still are able to move their legs or you can move their legs. Uh, if, if they've been dead a while, they get really hard and crunchy and you don't want that. So, um, so what I do is I just take a pin, a, uh, like this little sewing pin that you use, that your mama's, grandma's may use for sewing, okay? Just a little pin and put it through their body and attach it to the styrofoam. Then I take a little piece of paper. I first have to figure out exactly what kind of bug it is, what kind of insect it is. See, I've already done Katie did. So this is where that Katie did will go. All right. So this is my insect collection so far. I have a crane fly. There's a Florida oblong wing Katie did. That's a different species of the one that we um, just put in the kill jar. I have the ever famous bumblebee. I have the June bug, which guess which month it really likes? May. I have a glow worm. This is a funny, you don't see these a lot. Um, I don't know why it's called a glow worm, but actually the larva stage, which is the worms where it's really a worm, it actually has um, the capabilities to glow. It emits um, a light, so it's pretty cool. But that's a glow worm beetle. I have a red wasp, an assassin bug, There's a banded net winged beetle, a robber fly, a carpenter bee, that's a wasp, it's a ichneumon wasp, <laughs> two of them. I have a honey bee, I have the drone which is a little bit bigger, and then the worker bee. And then I have um, a root borer beetle. And then that's where the Katie did will go. So once you have all of your insects um, on your uh, display board, you can then really study them. You can use your magnifying glass to actually look very closely, glasses, at each individual insect. You can study their eyes, their antenna, their legs, their wings. So it's not just about sticking bugs on, an in, on a board. It's actually studying them, looking at them, look at and see what, what uh, how they're, they're built, their coloration, their eyes, their mouths. They have different kinds of mouths. Uh, each kind of insect has a different kind of mouth for what it does, for its job. Like butterflies, they have this long mouth that can go down into the flower. Uh, these katydids have chompers, chomp, 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 because they eat leaves. So it's fun. Oh, and then a mosquito. I don't have a mosquito on here, but it has one that'll stick you out. So it's fun to actually really look at these and really observe and study and learn about insects. So learning about insects is called entomology. Uh, that's the study of insects. And you can get your, you can make your own insect collection. So get started today. And if you make an insect collection, send me a picture of it. I'd love to post it on Facebook. Anytime that you do anything as a 4-H'er, -er, or not even a 4-H'er, -er, let me see it. I want to know what you're doing. So, this summer, go ahead, start your insect collection, and be an entomologist. Okay, well, our Katie did is uh, now dead. It moved a little bit, but I think we can uh, uh, post him on our um, board now. 
So what we'll do is we will take him out. Okay. And very gently take our pen. Okay. And put him on the board like so. So we can see. And there we go. Added him to our collection. Hmm, kind of morbid. But here's the deal. I could take my magnifying glass now and really study him closely. Wow, his wings are really cool. They're little. Where this one has really got big wings. It almost looks like a leaf. These are really small. They look like leaves. Then I could look at his mouth. Remember I said Katie did have chompers. And good for eating leaves. Absolutely. So, there you go. Insect collection. You guys have a great rest of the week and happy insect hunting.